The Assassin's Creed franchise took the gaming world by storm, and I've been a huge fan since the beginning. I've loved the series more and more with every new release because of the different styles, the settings, and of course, the different assassins you get to play as. And Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag instantly became my favorite in the series. It was just so unique and fun blending pirate elements with assassin elements, and in this video, it'll be the first Assassin's Creed Platinum trophy I'll have earned. What I wasn't prepared for was how much of a grind it would end up being, which I'll explain soon. We start the story with Edward Kenway, a pirate. We're forced to prove our ourselves as a captain right away in a battle that doesn't end too well because of this suspicious hooded individual here. Our ship goes down, but we manage to survive. I can't say the same for every other member of our crew though. We swim our way to the island and actually chase that same mysterious man who might look familiar. I was just trying to recruit him to my pirate crew since a whole bunch of vacancies just opened up, but he doesn't seem to want to join. Oh nah, he asked for it. He should have never shot at me, bro. That's it. He's done for. This guy's supposed to be an assassin. I'm going to be a better assassin than he ever was. He is done. For. Bro, what? How did I just fall? Bro, I can't. No way. Now, assassins are supposed to be trained killers, but luckily our hero here found the one disgrace of an assassin who goes down without many problems. Got something for you, buddy. Mm-hmm. Easy. Oh my God. Oh, wait, I forgot it was that easy. <laughs> Seriously, he barely gave us a scratch, except for that one shot he took. So to disrespect him further, we rob him of his clothes and steal his identity. Can't be an assassin looking like this, can we? Now let's address the elephant in the room. This is Assassin's Creed, but we're also pirates and pirates love money. We killed that assassin earlier because he had a meeting in Havana with a Cuban governor. So we set sail for that meeting because surely taking part in the corrupt government means lots and lots of money. Oh, and earning our first trophy. This is when the game starts to open up and we get to explore and do assassin things like climbing up for a viewpoint. You might be familiar, but these are a staple of Assassin's Creed games. These are high points in the area that you reach in order to unlock a section of the map, a huge part of the Ubisoft formula. We attend the meeting with the governor and his associates, who all happen to be Templars, kicking off pretty much the whole narrative of the game. And since we're an esteemed guest, we're gifted two pistols and issued a challenge. This is an optional objective. And by optional, I mean it's not optional at all. For the Platinum, I'll have to complete every optional objective in the game for this trophy. We'll call this phase one of the Platinum. I am allowed to redo missions at any point to clean these up, which is nice. What wasn't nice was the shooting challenge. All right, he gave me a challenge. Bro, I have to reload. Are we serious? I failed the challenge. Bruh. <laughs> Bro, this is not my fault. The, the the controls are so finicky. We really didn't reload before the actual challenge started. Are we serious? I missed. All right, this time I'm going to wait. Bro, finally. My goodness, that was ridiculous. Later, we spend some time with our new friends and get into some good old rough housing in the streets. You know, regular things the boys do together. It turns out our bond wasn't thicker than blood and they find out the truth about how we're not actually the assassin they were expecting, which gets us into some trouble, but it also leads to making a new friend and breaking out of captivity. And here is where the game actually opens up since we now have access to our ship, the Jackdaw. We can visit various locations or we can get into sea battles with other ships. It's recommended to loot as much as you can throughout the game in order to fully upgrade your ship, one of the last trophies I'll be getting. And as for the story, I'll skip through the missions in the interest of time. Now seems like a good point to go over everything else I'll have to grind. After phase one, I'll work on the cleanup portion, which is a lot. But the biggest grind is going to be the multiplayer. There's a few trophies to get here with the most obvious grindy one being level 55. You might be wondering how this will be possible on a decade old game with dead servers but don't worry i have a plan and no it does not involve finding a group of people to boost with i don't know what to do i could not bring myself to ask people to boost for 15 to 20 hours anyways back to the story missions our first real target as an assassin is actually our good old friend who gave us our pistols a few minutes ago i also have to stay out of combat and go for an air assassination which honestly makes for a fun mission in my book and it also earns us a trophy for completing sequence three 
A few sequences later brings us to this mission focused on naval combat. I wanted to showcase this because the ship combat is hit or miss amongst fans, but I enjoy it. In this mission, I'm defending another ship. We have different weapons at our disposal that only get stronger as you progress throughout the game. One of the best weapons is the mortar, which is required in this mission. You also have fire barrels, which are awful, as well as regular cannons and heavy cannons. Once you do a bit of damage to an enemy, you can also shoot these precision shots for big damage too. And of course, all the while avoiding enemy fire. Yeah, for some reason, I like the combat. Let me know if you like it or dislike it. I understand if you don't. Moving on, we have a pretty fun mission later in the game where my targets are two pirate Templars, Burgess and Cockrum. That took me like six attempts to record correctly. I have to double assassinate these two at the same time for an optional objective. I'm in the middle of their camp with a ton of enemies around. To get through this, I utilize probably the best tool in the game, the blowpipe. This allows me to put enemies to sleep, making it very easy to get past them. I climb and sneak around without anyone noticing and use the sleep darts whenever necessary. I do an awesome leap of faith and get into prime position to go for the kills, earning us a secret sequence 9 story trophy. And here's where we finally get into the observatory with our friend Roberts. This is an ancient building that houses a piece of Eden. That might all sound crazy to you, which means I'm spot on with the confusing overall story of the franchise. Roberts here is technically the only one who can get into this place, and of course, he is not really a friend. The building starts to collapse on us as we struggle to climb our way out, and when we do, we again are betrayed. You know, I'm starting to think Edward is a bad judge of character. This leads us to another prison break situation where we also break out some of our pirate friends, which brings on a pivotal few story moments. And soon after, we find ourselves in the observatory again. It's a tale as old as time. A man gets greedy with power, and it's up to us to stop him. Oh my goodness, what is going on? They are not capable of seeing what's in here, I guess. I don't know, but that guy just burned alive. Nope. Okay. Hopefully that was the checkpoint. <laughs> there we go. I made it this time. Use the observatory's defenses to kill guards. How do I do that? Is that thing going to blow up right there? Can I throw one of them? I think I can throw one of them. Like I can throw him in there. That counts as one. Oh, that does counts as two. Okay, easy. I try to be efficient and shoot him, but the game wouldn't let me, which is cringe if you ask me. Oh, there's my target. Can I just shoot him? Can I just do this? Bro, fake. He has a shield around him. That's so fake. I'm an assassin. Let me take him out how I want. Here's a shield right now. Boom, right here. Immune to guns, but that hidden blade, a hidden blade goes back centuries, legacies. Just like starting over. For a second, I thought I wasn't gonna get a trophy there. I was wondering like, should it have popped by now? <laughs> And with that completed, it was time to go redo any missions where I missed the optional objectives. Again, we're only gonna go over a few of the more unique ones here. All right, so in this mission, I need to use eight sleep darts on guards and two berserk darts. I did the berserk darts the first time I played this mission. I didn't have enough sleep darts, so that's why I didn't get it done. Should be pretty simple and quick. That is one. Two. Three. Four. Five. All right, so we should be able to get this done right here. He's a little too far. There's one right there, though. All right, that's eight. Now I just need to finish the mission, and then we're all set. And these sleep darts are so OP. They make the mission so easy. They make every mission so easy, actually. All right, so for this mission, I need to damage this fort here with a mortar shot. I think just one time. Use the mortar to damage the fort. Yep, just one time. Now, the problem is I have no mortars. I have zero shots, but... If I look at this ship, he has two, so he's got to go, but he's got to go down. I got to take him out and then loot his ship, use the mortar that I loot from right in front of the fortress, then get my bonus. <laughs> okay, so with that out of the way, I now have two mortar shots, and I think I just have to land one, which is really simple because it turns red. And perfect. That's it. This one's done. Oh, I do have to like take over the fort too, but like you guys don't have to see that. It's really simple. They're all low level. Oh my God. Wait, who's that? Bruh. I don't remember that. I don't remember actually seeing somebody get bit. So we need to make it back to the surface and never get attacked by a shark. This is where I struggled. So you're supposed to use the seaweed patches 
basically just stay low and then when they see you that red circle starts filling up but it turns yellow as soon as you go back into seaweeds it really shouldn't be too bad i don't know why i struggled but i think i think that's why there was two like right in front of where i need to get to oh my goodness there's four of them that see me bro i think i think i'm good i think i'm good i think i'm good wait wait, wait. okay we're good just had to be patient like i think i just rushed when i was playing the first time all right so for this mission i have to tail this boat but i also have to skin a crocodile uh and put three of them to sleep so when i did this the first time oh why can't i get down all right so when i did this the first time i didn't have enough darts and then i think one time i missed the crocodile and it started attacking me and then obviously since i missed i wasted a dart so this time i came prepared and if i miss i can just craft another dart and we should be good all right so that's two and three perfect and to finish it all off i have to take out roberts again the one who betrayed us earlier by hanging him i didn't know how to do this on my first playthrough but it's a fitting end for this phase of the grind all right it says 90 percent, but i already did that one earlier boom by the book complete 100 of all main mission constraints so that's it for the story and now that the main story was completed the real grind begins normally this is where i'd go back and get all the collectibles i missed and trust me there's a lot from chests to messages and bottles and even these very annoying sea shanties that fly away once you get close to them these suck because i really wanted my crew to sing different songs but it was so hard to catch them however in this game we don't need any of those collectibles not even all viewpoints instead we have different activities to complete around the world beginning with a very important one for all pirates unlocking all eight taverns while we were busy stopping the templars from taking over the world these thugs took over all the fine establishments that we like to visit and to unlock them we just have to beat the daylights out of them not a very tough task when your enemy is wasted do you guys not see edward like if i see a pirate walking down the street like that i'm not messing with him what are these guys thinking like oh I've, wait actually we're at a tavern they're drinking they're not really thinking <laughs> one more and we get our trophy Bar fly. And if you ask me, Edward definitely deserves a few drinks for all the hard work so far. Hilarious trophy, by the way. So now that we're all rested and revitalized, we take on a Templar hunt. These are basically a series of side quests that lead to exactly what it sounds like, hunting a Templar. Boy, he tried to run, yo. Oh, he's not gonna know what hits him. Did he make it to the ship? Oh, I think he did. Nah, that's crazy. I'm an assassin and I couldn't catch him. I'm stunned. Oh, we just go to our ship. Okay. A classic story of Hunter hunting the prey, gathering intelligence on our target and waiting for the exact moment to strike. After a few missions, we got him right where we want him. And there we go. Help a brother out. I did it incorrectly the first time, but we, we managed to get it done. This next one's for opening a secret door in Tulum. You know, the cool place with all the pyramids. Man, I love this game. Anyway, so open this super secret door. We actually do have some collectibles to gather. Across different locations in the game are a dozen or so puzzles where we use eagle vision to line up some sort of constellations, I think. I don't know. You guys tell me what to call these. Then we dig where they all intersect and voila, one piece closer. Did somebody say one piece? And once all of them are gathered, we're allowed into the secret door where we get a neat prize if I do say so myself. Other activity related trophies include exploring all shipwrecks around the map, some of which include plans for upgrading our own ship, which is a little worrisome. I don't know, maybe it's just me who doesn't want to follow upgrade plans of a ship that sank. We also captured every fort on the map because we're good pirates who want to take ownership away from the evil pirates. The financial gain we enjoy from taking over these forts, that's just a bonus. All right, so this is the last fort. There's nine defenses, geez. And I'm not at full health. Why did I come into this without full health? I set myself up. <laughs> Luckily, with my ship upgraded like this, it should be no problem. The defenses are going down pretty quickly. There we go. Okay, now we have to take out the commander and the trophy should be mine. All right, where's he at? Become anonymous? Oh, man. They don't want the work. Come here, buddy. Mm-hmm. Where's he at? I'm not wasting my ammo on him. We're going to go right up to him. He surrendered, but we're ruthless. King of the castle, baby. I like that trophy name. King of the castle. It should be king of the open seas. And naturally, during this phase, I visited every location in the game, popping another trophy. All right, if my calculations are correct, this should be the last location. I don't know why I said calculations. There's literally no calculations that went into this, but this should be the last location, which will pop a trophy. Oh, somebody's sinking over there. I'm not, I'm not trying to be part of that smoke. 
Of course, this is a danger zone. I'm just trying to get to this location for the trophy. I'm really not trying to get into a battle right now. Come on, let's see it, game. It says 52 meters, but I'm literally here. Cartographer. Okay, I got worried for a second. It didn't pop right away, so. I also had to go hunting again, and this time it was for a killer whale. Sorry, PETA. The trade-off for this platinum was worth it. There's a few different harpooning spots, but there's only one trophy, and it's for the biggest prize of them all. I'm not proud about this. You gotta believe me, I'm not proud about this, but it has to be done. He's actually a lot easier to hunt compared to a shark, honestly. That's it. The shark was giving me a lot of trouble. There we go. Killer, killer. I told you I'm not happy about it. Do I look happy? Also, speaking of hunting, I had to craft a hunter's outfit. To do this, I had to get my hands on two of the rarest animal skins in the game. They're each located in two harder to reach areas with lower spawn rates on top of being harder to take down. So instead, I took the easy route and bought the skins from a general store. Why does the general store have these skins just readily available and in stock? I have no clue, but it turns out that in this case, having more money led to less problems, not more. Okay, sorry. I did craft the outfit though. And by now, I'd completed a good chunk of the cleanup and phase two. One of the main grinds left was fully upgrading the ship, which still required a ton of money and resources. This was perfect because I still had one big activity left to clean up, naval contracts. Think of these as side missions where you essentially become pirate mercenaries for hire. They're located at each of the forts you conquer with 15 in total. The missions are usually pretty quick, requiring us to take down a few ships or retrieve some cargo. I actually enjoyed this part because although my ship wasn't maxed out, I was still very overpowered by this point, which allowed me to finish this part with no problem. Bro, my allies are almost dead. Like, I can't fail this mission. I can't call myself a real pirate if I let my ally go down. Okay, very nice. The final contract completed. And sea legs. However, what did give me problems was my next objective, defeating four legendary ships around the map, which is a blatant lie, by the way, because one of the ships is actually 2v1. So this really should say defeat five legendary ships. Here's how the first one went. And these ships are nothing like the ships we've taken on before. These are way stronger. I actually have no mortar. I have no mortar at all. It would have been smart to have mortar. Actually, I'm not even at full health. Never mind. Hold on. I need to get to full health. I'm only at two bars. All right, we're back. Oh, the game is warning me. I have mortar now, so I can start attacking it from a distance. And that's going to definitely be my plan because my mortar is pretty strong. My mortar is pretty strong. So just getting a little closer. It turns red as soon as I'm in range oh i didn't know there was a cutscene yo that ship looks crazy cool el impul impoluto impoluto i don't know if i'm saying that right yo the health barely went down hey yo he's coming straight for me bruh oh my god bro bro he moves so fast all right i need to use the ram again hopefully he doesn't oh he's turning he's gonna ram into me isn't he no no no. he's not he's not perfect 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 why are they so fast all right the ram and into the heavy shot was perfect i have the heavy shot and then of course i have the regular uh i don't know what this is called just regular shot i was bracing for impact right there which is perfect oh my goodness it's gonna ram into me again oh, that's not good Bro, when he rams into me, he does way more damage. Use the ram. Come on. Perfect. Good. Got some good heavy shots in too. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm down to my last bit of health, bro. Oh, they're coming for me. They're coming for me. Oh my goodness. Yo, what is going on? I can't even see. I'm actually like super close to winning after what just happened right there where I couldn't even see. Oh, please live, please live, please live, please live. Mission failed. Oh, that's that's a. Uh, that's a different mission. I don't care about that. 
Wait, I got him. I actually won. Nah, that's crazy. I almost died. Look how much health I have left, bro. What? After that one was done, I took on the 2v1 fight, which did not go according to plan. Well, that didn't work out. Since I was struggling so much, I decided to go max on my ship finally, which required a little bit more grinding. Fully upgrade the Jackdaw. If I can't take down those legendary ships now, I might have just failed as, as a pirate. I have no other words to say. Like, there's no way, bro. Like, I can't, I can't lose to them now. But it's a two-on-one fight. It's unfair. But I still didn't want to take on the 2v1 right away, so I took on the other two legendary ships first. And we'll come back to the twins. Oh my god, their mortar is so strong, bro. What? What? The ram is like all I can use, bro. What? They, oh my god, I'm gonna die. How did I die? Bro, I don't even know what's hitting me. I think it's just mortar. How come they can use mortar on ships right in front of them? My mortar has to be from a distance. Oh, they think they're getting away. Not on my watch. They're trying to sail away from me not happening buddy come here come here ram boom yo the ram does so much damage i think this is working how is this plan working i'm just following them from behind i'm just following them from behind just ramming into them this should do it it should do it right here boom i can't believe that worked there was like no strategy involved just keep ramming into them head on <laughs> No thinking involved, just brute forcing it. Caveman style. All right, the strategy is working the caveman style, just ramming into the ship. As soon as I ram into it, I slow down so he can gain some distance on me. And then I speed back up so I can ram into him again because it's way stronger than my cannons. And at this angle right here, he never really gets a chance to like shoot back at me. Which is why my health is so full and that fight is done. So it really is just one legendary ship left. I think this was a ghost ship too. That's why it looks like all dark and the sails were kind of uh, like ripped. It was a ghost ship apparently. Honestly, this plan is kind of flawless. Or maybe I shouldn't say flawless. That is a bad word to use. Oh my goodness, Brace! Bro, there's no way I can lose. Like I'm almost... We're almost there. Oh, I actually won. <laughs> the ram is so strong. And there we go. Devil of the Caribbean. Did I just unlock a new attack? That's literally the last ship I need to take out. And I unlocked a new attack. Why didn't they give me that before? It's time to talk about what really turns so many people away from this platinum, the multiplayer. I'll admit, nobody plays Assassin's Creed for multiplayer. Somehow Ubisoft didn't know this though, or maybe they just didn't care. Anything to sell those microtransactions, am I right? Why are there clans in Assassin's Creed? What am I reading? There's creative classes too and perks. Oh my goodness. This last stretch for the platinum was the biggest grind. It is so tedious doing the same task over and over for one trophy, reaching level 55. However, I mentioned earlier that I did have a plan. There's a few things to do in multiplayer. I had to play every game mode once and use every ability and range weapon once. This wasn't a huge deal as I could usually search for a game mode and eventually find a game. I even played a few games with some mods from chat, which made finding these games a little bit quicker. Every time I unlocked a new ability or ranged weapon, I made sure to use it right away, not only for the all-rounder trophy, but also because it made the XP grind so much faster. And here's why. Similar to Call of Duty, Black Flag has challenges that reward you with XP. There's three XP rewards per challenge. The more you use the ability while you play, the more XP you end up with. Focusing on these challenges saved me so many extra hours of grinding. But if you struggle to find games consistently, none of this matters, right? Well, that's where the Wolfpack mode comes in. You see, the devs were nice and they included this mode in multiplayer that you can actually play solo. You earn points for taking out computer NPC targets around the level. And there's a bunch of ways to get bonuses like staying hidden while you approach them or getting an aerial kill. I played this solo Wolfpack mode for around 15 hours, mindlessly over and over. I eventually got pretty good at it too and became very efficient at earning the most points possible, which makes each game a lot quicker. Eventually, I reached this moment. Committed to the cause. Prizes, plunder, and adventure, baby. I want to point out that I didn't say let's go. So several of you have pointed out I say that a lot. Uh, yo, this game was such a grind. 
Okay, so that grind was crazy, but I still enjoyed this game. If you want to see another game that I enjoyed and I earned the platinum, go ahead and click on the screen here. Hopefully I play another Assassin's Creed here soon, maybe. Let me know down below, but click here and let me know over there too.